Welcome to Dano on Fire, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. I'll have to always look at you through this little line here. I'm checking out Narathai and uh, we're going to enjoy all this amazing food. And I am accompanied by the one and only Rehan. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you might Hi. have always seen him on news for like other things. Uh, Moses, like, <laughs> like Moses standing on the road for something <laughs> or the other. But this time around, we're going to sit down and have a conversation, which is amazing. So Rehan, how do I know him is because uh, by default, I ended up being living down the same lane he was living. Of course, his house was the first house. I was at the end somewhere. But anyway, it was a private road. Um, that's where I got to know him and your family. Uh, You're making me look really good, Macha. <laughs> yes. Thank he you. Was, he was a good boy at that time. <laughs> he was a very good boy. Rehan, tell me, do you like politics? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I mean it. No? But I, you can't say, I can't say I like it. There are times that I, that I, that I really don't. There are mm. times I just wish I migrated. Mm. But you have thought about why, why have you chosen this field of you know, politics when you yeah. could have chosen many others. But you had a lot of influence from the time you were very young. Tell me about Nepotism. it. Nepotism. <laughs> nepotism. No, no, no. no, not real nepotism. So uh, both my grand uncles were politicians, but then again they died years ago. Yeah, one, that's right. There was no connection. Yeah, one. But then your stepdad was also. Yes, he was, and yeah. he also died when I was very young. <laughs> yes, I was. Then. Yeah, that was soon after my mum passed. Yes, yes, around about the same time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but one of the main reasons is because I think we have such a beautiful country. Yeah. And when we go to holidays to places like the Thailand and Malaysia, am I used to, am I, am I supposed to that's use okay. words like bloody and all Yeah, that's we okay. can use. Because bloody is not a bad word. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think after going to those countries, you realize that you don't really need to go on holiday to all these countries because mm. we have something so beautiful. Yeah, and a sad passport that can't give you a visa on Exactly. Time. And yeah. most You'd rather just be here. <laughs> so most of our politicians, they screw things up. Yeah. He said, okay, he said, well, that's fine. Yeah. So they mess things up. Uh -huh. And I just think that the younger generation, if you all get together and stuff, I just think that we can make this country a whole uh, better place than what it is. So you were the mayor at one time. In Valigama. In Valigama. And yeah. you had one of the younger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you had great praises for it. You were at sites really fast. You were hands on with a lot of things. How did that work? How was that leadership role there? No, so I was appointed by Mangala mm. because I obtained the highest amount of votes. So Mangala had this huge influence in me, uh, in the politics that I did. Um, and uh, there are certain decisions I made when I was a mayor. Uh, there is not a single accusation of corruption during my tenure. And even after my tenure, there is not a single accusation mm. of corruption. Um, so I think I did my job well. But then I supported Sajid during the 2019 presidential election. And then in 2020, I was kicked out by Yours truly, mm. he who must not be named. Mm. But okay. I'm not going to say comments on those things. I'm just going to talk about it. But you know, being rebellious in politics, is it a good thing? I don't think I no get up in the way. morning thinking, <laughs> oh, I want to be rebellious. But then there are times where I had to be. For example, when Hironika was doing her number by herself and no um, known male politician was helping her out. I thought that it's my duty to sort of go and help her out because she's also a mother of two mm. and she wasn't getting that required male support. Uh, so there were times, most of the trouble that I've got into is because of Hirunika. Mm. Most of the court cases I have also is with Hirunika. <laughs> um, but other than that, no, I've, I've always, not that I've always been rebellious in politics, but I've always been rebellious even when growing up. I always went above the norms or did things that I was not supposed to do even when I was very young. Mm. But when you sit back and see all, like even today before you came here, you had a CID meeting. Uh, <laughs> inquiry. But, uh, inquiry. It was summoned. Summoned. When you think of all of this, do you feel like, you know, I just don't want any of this. I just want to sit back, enjoy my life with my kids. It's so funny you said that. Um, because a few months ago, I was watching this robbery uh, in this murder. Mm. On um, They showed it, it was a WhatsApp clip, mm. where this guy walked into this shop and shot this shop owner point blank. So then I told Anika, my wife, I was like, Anika, shall we just give up all of this and shall we just go to Melbourne? I was actually thinking and then I got a call from the CID. <laughs> you can't <And> go. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the CID was like, oh, we want you to come for an inquiry for torching a politician's house. So then I was like, Anika, I was like, you know, whenever you want to get out of this thing, they always find you a way to drag you back <laughs> in. Mm. And so there have been times like that. Yeah. And, uh, but, but you come from a family of great politicians, uh, names that they have like 
stayed on for years. Yeah. Uh, do you feel politics is corrupted by the system or the, by the people who have come in with that corrupted mindset? No, so I think that to be like a relation or uh, whatever of a politician, it shouldn't be a qualification to enter mm. politics. No, should it be a disqualification? Mm. It should all be based on you know what you have to offer to the table, which is why I started my career at the Urban Council. Most politicians' children they start off right in Parliament or they finish off where their grandparents or parents finished off. But one thing that you said about that whole the, the two grandparents that I had. Uh, didn't have any charges of corruption. Mm. One of them did have accusations about how he dealt with the JVP. I don't know whether he did some of the things he did or not. Uh, but there was never like financial irregularities or robbing the state or things like that, right? So I think it's it's about what you what you want from politics. Mm. Whether you want to be corrupt and uh, wear pateks and wear all sorts of nice watches and have all sorts of nice cars and all sorts of nice houses. Or if you're comfortable with changing the system, which is what we need to change. Yeah. We need to change the system. And when it comes to corruption, I just think that Sri Lanka should be in a place where, I don't know if you, I, no, I'm pretty sure you know this, but you know my brother, my own brother is a senior law enforcement officer in Melbourne. He's mm. a senior cop. Mm. And one reason why he doesn't want to come he's back. He's fancy looking, by the way, just. Yeah. I met him recently. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, he has more muscles. But yeah. But um, No, he has muscles. Yeah, he has muscles. Yeah, I don't. What were you doing? Yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Dan. I got that. Yeah. So he was Mr. Australian on at one point. Oh really? Yeah, he was. Sure. Mr. Melbourne. Oh wow. But um, one of the reasons I asked him why he doesn't want to come back here, he said for you to get your birth certificate, you need to bribe someone. For you to get your death certificate, your uh, living relatives have to bribe someone. Yeah. For you to get your driving license, you need to bribe yeah. someone. So he's like why should why should there be a bribing system? Why can't citizens just you have know, a process be, which is easy? Yeah, exactly. That is true. Uh, well, there's so much to talk about. We're going to come back and speak more because there's a there's a very soft side to him, and that's what I want to speak about uh, when we do come back. Do stick around. This is uh, done on fire, and we're checking out food from Narathai. We have got so too many things to try out. I think this is called Tomium, right? I knew it. I knew one thing in life. I'm, do you want me to serve it for you? Um, Serve, serve. We're getting into a break. We'll see you right after. the show we are checking out Narathai and I have Rehan. I wanted to speak about the fact that Rehan comes from a household like everyone's where you have a grandma who really looks after him and whips him into shape. Unfortunately she passed away in her soul recipes. She was one of our favorite people down the lane. She used to always have a conversation and it was fun. You were the notorious grandson that she had to always look out for. True. Can you believe it that she asked me to look out for him? Me. And did you? No. <laughs> I didn't. But tell me about t tell me about home. How was it? Um, so my mom, we were basically raised by my mom. Mm. Uh, my mom um, was married uh, thrice, but even though she was married thrice, she always made it a point to look after us. I opted to stay back with my grandma, huh. and so Sashin, my brother, grew up with my grandma. Right. Uh, and I grew up with my mum um, all throughout my 20s up until the time I got married mm. <laughs> and, and then spent a few years in Australia but yeah but you know Danu I have a very um, in my family with my mum she has three sisters so I didn't have any uncles so I was basically raised by women, women yeah. but all these women were not normal women they were like powerful women mm. 
in terms of like how they used to go about things. So my grandma, she used to do all the household stuff. Throughout her life, she was always in the kitchen, um, looking after the fact that we get our meals on time. Yeah. So I always love her cooking. Mm. Uh, and all three of my aunts. So I basically, that's why I always say that I have not just one mom, I have four moms, um, five moms with my grandma. Yeah. All of them have made you. Yeah, so <laughs> was, I, yeah they have. And um, when you ask me about them, rebellious and why I, you know, when I had to go for the CID thing in the morning, also yeah. a lot of people were like asking me, oh my God, are you worried? And uh. are you this and that. But it's just another day, you know. Yeah. And, they were and like, in this job, I think it comes with the package. Yeah, but then yes. there are some people who go get themselves admitted to hospital and make a huge hoo ha about it. Yeah. So one person actually asked me, oh, what if they throw you in jail? I said, so what? Nelson you can't just be on the show and I would have hated you forever. And that's something I told one of the guys. <laughs> I said, no matter what, even if yeah. I'm going to put me in jail, please wait, wait for one night. Yeah, to <laughs> wait for one night and I'll be right back. Yeah, it's CID. actually easier. You can get out of the CID better than falling under my spell. <laughs> Absolutely. So losing Danu Grandma was like a real horror story yeah, for, for me. Because sure. I've already lost my stepfather and my dad mm. when we were young. The same time you lost your mom. So dealing with, like, with life without her is very miserable, but there are so many things that she's taught me and so many videos and pictures and yeah. little things that I have of hers that makes it easy. Yeah, But uh, living a normal life is really hard, especially when you come with a family that come from a family that has a surname that's recognizable or even a family that's recognizable. Your life can never be like, you know, I can do something and get away. Even if you get into a small fight in a restaurant or let's say an argument with a, uh, with a waiter, just example. Yeah. Yeah. It's all going to become newsworthy. Somebody's going to talk about here, this is that Rehan man. You know, who, who is this Rehan? That Rehan. So it's always going to have that, you know, there's never going to be a plug that's just going to be taken off. It's going to continue. How have you seen it when you were growing up? So when I was growing up, I used to get into a lot of trouble. Mm. Uh, none of them newsworthy except something that happened in 2015 when I was not a politician. No, 2012 when I was not a politician. But now in my life, I'm very careful even when it comes to going out in the night mm. or you know, even having a tequila shot mm. Um, mm. with someone, it kind of worries me because I don't know who the hell has their phones on. Oh, yeah. But now I have a wife but who is sort of doing what my <laughs> mom and all used to do and they're like, Rehan. Yeah. But at yeah. the end of the day, you're still human. You still have friends. You still want to relax. You still want to have a good time somewhere and that can't be held against you. Yeah, but with the way Sri Lankans Typical Sri Lankans think, Danu, like imagine me having a tequila body shot, even with my wife in a bar. <laughs> yeah. The next day, that entire video will be out and they'll be like, oh, Rehan doesn't know how to behave. They wouldn't stop to ask, is this my wife? Yeah, that is true. They'll just be like, this is some random girl that I met at a bar or something. Mm. So there are lots of things that, are, that, that, that I have to be careful of. But I don't regret it because I think that's part and parcel of public life. There's nothing called private life in a public life because everything that's private becomes public, public. and everything that's public also becomes public. And also if you ever try to make your private life private, it becomes more public. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, this word when you say, you know, I'm a politician, um, are you ready for the run from here to parliament, parliament to whatever, like you feel like opportunities will be given to youngsters? So the funny thing is I was never going to run for parliament in 2020. But Mangala and Sajid convinced me to run. I came third. Mm. I was so unlucky that the Rajapaksha swept that election and only one got in from Mathura district. So imagine running a race where you're third and you still don't get a medal, yeah. right? So there are times like that where you think, and it's also done a waste of money when it comes to the electoral system we have. Yeah. It's who spends the most amount of money is the one who gets elected. So, But how do we change the mindset of the people not to look out for that temporary fix? that temporary gain that they're going to get? I think it has to come, like for example, it has to come from within. For example, when you look at what happened in Thailand, the Thai election was like swept by this new progressive movement with the new Prime Minister being 42 years old, right? That's not something that they pushed on to the people, but that's something the, the people, people themselves embraced, yeah. wanted. So I mean, Sri Lankans have to understand. And if Sri Lankans don't understand, there'll be a time where progressive politicians like me will also be retired because I don't plan on doing politics after the age of 65. Whether I reach the top or not, I think 65 is a cutoff time, you're done, you're dusted, you've got to go spend time with your kids, your grandkids or whatever. But then it's also a waste of our time. So the, so the more Sri Lankans waste on not being progressive and not wanting a change, it's also based in the times of politicians like us who really want to make a change. Mm. 
And, and, and that's the sad part, because we have so many progressive politicians, right? You know, from Harsha to Iran, to I can name quite a few. And the ones that I don't name, please don't get annoyed at me, I just can't remember Keep all of you. all the names, yeah. yeah. The, but there are so many progressive politicians. Tarak Abalasuri from the opposition, mm -hmm. he's quite a progressive guy, but you know, there's a limit that we can do and the rest is in the hands of the people. All right. Let's speak about party leaders when we do come back, because end of the day, oh that's how it all rocks. After the break, do stick around with Dhamon Fire. Welcome back to the show. It's Dano on Fire. We're checking out Nara Rattai and uh, this is our final segment. So I wanted to speak to you a little bit about political leaders. End of the day, they are the ones who sort of run the party. They're the ones who appoint their people. Are they understanding? Are they willing to take up criticism from youngsters, newcomers? You won't believe me if I tell you this, but please do. Um, I know a lot of people have criticisms about the way Sajid Premadasa, about some of the things he says. But you take my word when I tell you that he is so open to criticism that all you got to do, or as party members, what we do is if we see something wrong, we tell him and he adapts immediately. He also gives room for like younger politicians to shine. Um, gave me multiple positions in the party, but not just me, so many other people. What he always tells us is that um, there should be a retirement age once you're done with politics. But there should also be a succession plan. Mm. Succession plan meaning not nepotistic, or not on nepotism lines, mm. but that you know there should be um, A, B, C, D. You know, um, leadership tiers A, B, C, D, where it just doesn't. And 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 when you look at the when you look at the UMP, you'll see that the current president has been the leader since 1994 of the UMP with no succession plan. But you know, he's one of the most understanding leaders that I've worked with. Not that I need to curry favor to him or anything. I don't call him honorable leader or anything. Um, just call him either SP boss or Sajid. And he's given that right too. Usually you've got to get up on all fours and uh, get down on all fours and, you know, address them by saying things like, you know, Lord, your Lord Highness or whatever in singular terms. But he's quite, um, he's quite okay with, and he's quite liberal and he's progressive. But you know, this whole point of politicians not understanding, it's the people who have given them this place mm. and time to serve <clears throat> in the keyword. Do you think everyone understands it? Because they feel like there is also this frill of expectation and this thing of, you know, I want to be heard because I'm a politician. Open the door because I'm a politician. Do you think it's our fault or is it their fault? Sri Lankans are also, certain Sri Lankans are used to servitude where they're so used to calling the president of the country His Excellency or calling ministers honorable minister uh, whereas in England you call them Mr. Minister. So it's a mindset about the people that live in this country, Dhanna. And if you know, and if we accuse politicians of robbing the country, we've also got to understand that those politicians have been repeatedly voted in by voters, knowing the fact that they're corrupt. Right? I remember when the previous governments came in place, the main contention point was, oh, he is bad, but he is not as bad as the other. Mm -hmm. So, the, so the, the bar that we set, the bar that the public sets for these things at an all-time low. Right. So if we place the bar high, and if we say that we want this type of public representative coming into office, I think that will change. But as long as we have the bar lower than low, mm. then what do you expect? True. But you know, it has come to a point where Sri Lankans, you know, for us to have a timeline where we had so many um, names that we called politicians during the Aragalia, doesn't it sort of make you or the party sometimes sit back and realize thinking, have we lost our place in the people's mindset for them to go to the point of calling them all sorts of names to actually chasing politicians who walked into the Aragalia? just makes us understand like do you think they still have the say as they used to have no but i think but i think when it comes to aragalia that was a really scary point where we weren't sure even as a young politician we were not sure about how we we're going to enter the aragalia right but then me and a few other young politicians we actually went and we didn't hear anything from them um they didn't call us crooks they didn't call us thieves they didn't call us corrupt they were pretty welcoming mm. we went to golf face for multiple times we went on Pelapalis with them, we went to the president's house with them. But at the same time, there were also like olden day politicians who were with us, 
like few meters away from us who were getting ridiculed by the people and they had to leave mm. so i so that's when we thought that it's about who you are as a politician and what you want to portray i don't know whether it will be like that somewhere down the line for us in a future aragalaya if there'll ever be one but that aragalaya showed that people didn't really hate all politicians so that's this huge narrative that they're trying to spin now mm. but they didn't hate all politicians they just hated the bad ones do you feel if politicians are paid better uh because you know they live a certain lifestyle do you think there will be less corruption um that depends on the anti corruption framework that we already have in place but if we have a very strict um enforcement agency that looks because into honestly tell me with your salary that you get in a position that you held as mayor do you know how much i got paid that's what i got paid 25000 rupees uh, as the salary for being a mayor I got 2500 as a phone allowance and got 10000 rupees to hire another pro like a public relations officer so the entire package was under 50000 you tell me so obviously if you're going to get that money and if you're the, if that's your only source of income obviously you will have to look at other avenues mm-hmm. because you can't even buy it. now i've been blessed because i've had so many support systems from my mom to my grandma yeah, to my right. aunts and all so that's but you. if you but if you're not yeah. if you're not you're going to be corrupt yeah because what have, what can i do with 25000 Ex- exactly which is why when people say oh mp shouldn't get this mp shouldn't get that I agree MP shouldn't get their pensions MP shouldn't get duty free permits but then I also agree that MP shouldn't get paid 75000 rupees because what do you do with 75000 yeah. rupees so that's what i'm saying so without making making corruption look normal if we can pay them the right amount and hold them accountable for corruption do you think it'll be a better thing of course like if we had like i told you anti corruption framework in place something that is like full proof like what you get in singapore for example and you pay them higher salaries I think people won't be corrupt and I think more professionals will get into it. Yeah, because because, a, because, because why would a job? because why would a mercantile CEO who's just about to get going to retirement who earns about 600,000 rupees or more more why would they want to do a job where they get paid 75,000 bucks? So I mean and and also you got to set some sort of standard when you're entering parliament. You know at least you got to have this qualification. basic qualification right now do you know that there is no uh, minimum qualification to enter parliament but there is a minimum qualification to be a security guard uh, in a government institution which is grade 8 a security guard can go up to grade 8 and become a security guard a politician um, can be even pass grade 1 or not even go to school and become the president of the country how does that make sense yeah well, i really hope this outspoken personality that you have doesn't end up either Dead. killing you or <laughs> making you disappear but i really wish that uh, more people speak out uh, thank, thank you rehan for coming and being a part of the show i really want you to enjoy some banana fritters while you're here <laughs> uh, but i wish you all the very best and i really hope that new the new blood that's going to pour into politics and also hopefully new corporate leaders new uh, new new faces who are educated who have seen the world who have seen where we are short as a country and where we need to progress come forward and run this state and thank i think that will be that will be a great thing for us anyway thank you so very much thank you for I having me on any time all the best your hands covid uh, not me <laughs> <laughs> on that don't we to wrap things up thank you so very much for all those who tuned in and also our friends at nara thai thank you for hosting us we will see you soon till they keep smiling as well. <laughs>